Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusker, here for another special edition of the show. So I'm here at the San Antonio Cocktail Conference. It's uh, the first day. I'm already on my second uh, French 75. This is the one with the gin. I actually found out today that the original French 75, I gotta look it up. It's one of my good friends who, who lives here in San Antonio um, told me that the original French 75 actually had gin and cognac in it, not one or the other. So I already had the one with the cognac. Sorry, grapes usually went out. But I've got the gin one here, and this is like beet, uh, beet juice. Um, so here, uh, here staying at the beautiful St. Anthony Hotel. Um, first time I've ever stayed here. Um, but uh, I, I've been here plenty of times for the conference because uh, the last few years has been based out of St. Anthony. Uh, the first year that I've been there, first year I went to the conference is based out of uh, the Gunter. Um, and this is my, first my fifth year coming. Um, and it's been five, the, the conference has been five years. So I'm either the, my fourth year or fifth year. I'm pretty sure it's my fifth year. Might be my fourth. I think it's my fourth. Anyway, but the conference is only five years old, and I've seen it grow. I've seen it grow from like a disorganized, yeah, to something that's really, really well oiled. Um, they do a really good job here. Um, I compare it a lot in my head to Texom. Texom's been around twice as long, so um, they kind of they kind of got their stuff together. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, conference is great. I've got some stuff to do here a little bit later. Um, it's uh, uh, what I got. I got uh, some about perfection, some about making drinks, or whatever. It's all about making drinks. So anyway, uh, we got some good stuff coming up. You'll see, like the um, symposium. I'll be doing morning. Um, I'll be doing morning um, updates, and uh, I might with this conference. I might throughout the day like do some other uh, video. Um, I won't do any video at night. And, and to be honest, it's because there's a lot of alcohol involved at, at, on, on this conference at night. Whereas with um, the symposium, that really it was all during the day and it was a lot of uh, tasting. But in this case, a lot, of, a lot of tasting. So I'm not gonna really be doing much at night other than pictures. So uh, hopefully you followed my Instagram uh, account. If not, check it out. All right, we'll see you in a minute. All right, so uh, recap from yesterday. So um, I took some uh, I took some video yesterday um, of, of one of the things, but let's just start at the beginning. So first of all, we had the Dueling 75 Juice Bar. So French 75 um, that, uh, and I mentioned this, well, you won't see the interview yet because the interview's after this. Um, so they had uh, gin and they had uh, cognac um, as the base ingredient <clears throat> for French 75s with three different juices. Um, so I'm going to go there today in a little bit to uh, do the next round of those. And they, um, they also have a, uh, today they have a Bloody Mary bar. So I'm going to check that out. Um, <clears throat> I actually thought they were doing something weird with Bloody Marys. I thought they were doing dueling French 75 Bloody Mary bar. So I thought they were doing Bloody Marys with gin. Interesting concept, um, but that's what I thought they were doing. Um, but then they re-educated me on what a French 75 is. Um, and actually, uh, someone had told me that it was both of those uh, ingredients. I still have to look it up. Both of those were actually in the original recipe. Uh, you had the, the cognac and the gin at the same time. So I have to look that up. Anyway, um, it was cool. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't, the sh it didn't have a, well, they, let's see, did she put some? Yeah, did she, she put some sparkling in, in the, in the cognac one. I don't remember seeing her putting sparkling in the, um, the gin one. Anyway, I'll check it out today. Um, had some breakfast, really nice. Uh, there's a little atrium area you can you can sit at in the St. Anthony. Um, and I went to a, um, a, uh, a seminar called Search for Perfection. And it was, uh, a lot of it was about um, not just creating a perfect cocktail. It's like, you know, when you create these recipes, 
can you execute them in the reasonable amount of time? You know, uh, you don't want a long ticket time on these things. And <clears throat> also like ideas of how to prep and what to prep and things that you can do uh, on the back end um, to help you out. So um, it wasn't, you know, there this, this was not a, it was not a, a seminar where you're, you're tasting anything because you didn't need to, um, which was cool. And then uh, uh, after that, I had some lunch and then, I went to a, another seminar on barrel making with Jack Daniels. So I had the barrel, the barrel master, uh, and his assistant. Uh, I took video of that. So um, I don't know how much, I don't know how much of, um, I don't know how much that I'm going to put in here because it was about 15 to 20 minutes long. Um, it was super interesting. Also, it was outside in what they call the motor lobby. So you hear traffic out there. So how much of that I'm actually going to put in there? I don't know. I'll, I'll probably edit that down a little bit. And uh, so you'll probably see that here in just a second. And then, um, uh, and then after that, it was uh, an interview um, uh, with Mattias Horseman uh, from uh, Hendrix. I got the taste, I got a little preview of uh, their new Hendrix uh, Gin uh, Orbium. Uh, super delicious. So check out that interview. Uh, that will be the next episode after this. Um, so check that interview out. It should be really good. I uh, had a great time with him. Um, and uh, he's a cool, cool guy. I, I remember meeting him, uh, if not last year, then the year before. So all that. Oh, by the way, I'm thinking of last year, year before, yada, yada. Um, you'll see in the interview that I said that it, this is the fifth year of the Costco Conference. This is the seventh year. But this is the fifth year I've come. 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah. This is the fifth year I've come. Um, so that's, that's where I got the five years from. But I, I've been coming almost since the beginning. So... Um, anyway, so then after that, there was just, uh, these, um, uh, tasting events all over, um, whiskey tasting event, uh, it had some cocktails going on. Um, I had a good dinner over, over at Bohannon's, uh, some, some former colleagues of mine worked there. So I had some dinner there, uh, uh, bought, uh, bought a bottle of, um, Revolver Wine Company's, uh, The Fury. It used to be called Furioso, so I don't know why he changed it, but, um, if you, if you go back, I'll, I'll put a link to it, but if you go back a few years ago, I uh, interviewed Brian Page, um, who's the winemaker, uh, along with um, Rick Ramos, uh, who owns Alberco. But unfortunately, Alberco in San Antonio is no longer open, but he still has his one in McAllen. Um, probably one of my most fun interviews I've ever done because I pretty much just sat back and watched two really good friends just talk with each other about their lives. So um, it, was, it was a really good time. On that one, so check out that interview too. I'll put a link on. I'll put a link below on, on the website. Remember website, um, or you can find it um, on YouTube. And then, um, <clears throat> uh, then after that, um, I went to the Come and Taste It event. So it was uh, tasting with food, uh, mostly mostly you know beverage. Almost everything was uh, liquors, uh, and cocktails. There was a um, uh, free tail did have a little bit of a beer thing. I, that's actually what I did at the very end. I went and said after. Tasting all these, uh, taking all, tasting all these liquors. I need a beer, <clears throat> so um, and Free Tail is a uh, is a local brewery here in San Antonio. Uh, so I checked out a lot of that. Um, the venue that I was at is called Battle, what's it? Battle for Texas, uh, something like that. The experience, something like that. It's it's like a museum type of thing, but it's like a museum that you walk through. Well, you always walk through a museum, but it has like little 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 stations, and they have like little somewhat interactive things that go on. Um, I, it's, 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 it's been at the mall for, I want to say a couple years now. Um, so it was my first time checking it out. It's a cool spot. Um, and then, uh, met some friends, uh, who met some former, former, uh, fellow employees for, for a drink. And then, uh, we went to, um, a couple of us went to a, uh, an event that was honoring, uh, Dave Pickerel. Um, he was the master distiller at Whistlepig. He unfortunately passed away last year. Uh, and, he was a cool cat. I mean, I, I, I don't didn't know him that well, but my first introduction to him was a, um, a whiskey. Uh, it, was, it was a whiskey seminar, and somehow it was like a two-part seminar, and somehow I couldn't get into the first one, but I got into the second one, and we tasted some really cool whiskeys. And, uh, uh, and then I remember later that night at one of the nighttime events running into him, and you know, sharing sharing a drink with him, and it seemed like every year I, I at least got to share one drink with him. Um, 
and he was a cool guy, uh, really super knowledgeable, and uh, you know somebody that you wanted to be around. So uh, like I, said, I didn't really know him that well, but they had a, they had like a little um, event for him last night at Shuck Shack. Uh, that's a that's a Jason Dady, um, uh, one of Jason Dady's uh, concepts. Uh, I, I, he was he was at the Come and Taste It. He also was at the Shuck Shack, and if you didn't know who he was, you wouldn't know. Like he had he was like you know had had a pullover and his ball cap and you know just kind of hanging out with people and you know I hung out with him for a little bit over there. But he's a super approachable guy. If you remember way way back in the day, I interviewed him at Culinaria, which is a more of a food event here in San Antonio. Uh, interviewed him, I think, like in 2010, something like that. So I, I've known him for a while. And uh, also uh, Chef Caesar um, from Sangria on the Berg. Um, it's another little cool, it's a really cool spot, small. It's on Fredericksburg here in San Antonio. Um, I've, I've, I've met him a few times. Actually, a good friend of mine works uh, works there. Um, and I told him, I promise him, I'll, I'll Chef, I'll be out some point in time soon. He's just literally on, on the other side of town from where I live. Um, but I did say, I have nothing better. I have nothing but time right now. So, uh, I'll go over there, uh, to go say hi to him and my, my friend Michelle. So, uh, if you go over there, say hi to them too. Um, but he had a little bit of a food thing, uh, going out to come and taste it. And then, uh, finished the night at La Roca and it was, a um, it was a Mezcal, uh, did I have it on here? No, I didn't have it on there. Um, it was a Mezcal pop-up that lasted till 2 a.m. And, uh, so I hung out there, had a couple mezcal palomas, um, literally I did two, <laughs> um, and uh, then you know took took a lift back to the um, hotel. At 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 uh, <clears throat> at Shuck Shack, they they was a sing along. I didn't know what they meant by sing along. I thought you know maybe they were gonna play a bunch of music that that Dave liked to sing because I, I didn't really know that he liked singing because I never saw him do that. Um, but it was more of a karaoke thing. So I did a couple karaoke songs. It was it was fun. All right, so uh, that's the recap from yesterday. Um, the heck was that? <laughs> um, I don't know what that noise was, but it sounded like it was outside. Um, I took a bunch of pictures at the Come and Taste It, so hopefully I've, uh, I'll, I'll throw some of that in here. Um, and uh, and we used a ton, ton, of, ton of brands there. I tasted a lot of just straight spirits, and I had a couple of the cocktails. Um, I was the one guy that was spitting into the cup. Um, so one, one thing I, I definitely want to say, these things, these types of conferences, these are marathons, not sprints. So if you want to be upright by the end of the conference, man, and it, it, there's a lot of free booze, a lot of free booze. Okay. Um, you, you can get tore up and then they have people, they have people like staff, volunteers, uh, and there's also secure, there's also off, off duty police officers. Um, they're there to make sure that you don't get tore up, but it's super easy to get tore up on free, on free booze. Um, especially cause you're not really thinking about that. You're, you're going, no, no, don't come in. <laughs> Actually, I think there might be like a dog next door. There's like a door that's, um, there's a door that goes to the next room and someone's hitting it. Anyway, um, Maybe they're trying to tell me to shut up. Anyway, um, the point is, uh, when you go to these types of conferences, um, it's, it's a marathon. Have fun. Um, be responsible. Don't, don't get too crazy. I mean, I, I've gotten crazy, trust me, uh, conferences or just in general. But don't get too crazy. And, you know, I'm staying downtown because it makes it a lot easier to, to do stuff at a conference. Um, and my car is at home. So I don't, even have, I don't even have a way to get into a car if I'm going to go hit the bars out around here for these pop-ups. So anyway, um, looking forward to today. Uh, I got a lot, of, a lot of stuff on, on tap to do and I won't go through the whole list of what I'm going to do today because I'll recap it tomorrow and uh, see you in a minute. And that new raid, when we saw it, will actually keep the whiskey from going through it. So that's why we use white oak. And you can kind of see that, uh, here, I'll show you. Now let me show you another one here. It's going to be outside of the ring fell down. This is a toasting stage. Now, once we get the barrel together, we leave the heads out, and we'll actually toast the stage. And what that does, that break down from the wood uh, parts of the, of the wood on the grain. It'll actually turn loose some of them sugar, bring, bring them to the center, and let the help the whiskey get a hold of that sugar as that happens. So we actually toast it like uh, you would toast the toast. It smells really sweet. You can probably smell some of that. 
that. Here's a pass that around. Then as we uh, after we toast our wood, then we'll come back and actually we'll, we'll char it. And we we do a like a 20 second char inside. And that will caramelize all the sugars that we brought up in the toasting side to help help uh, the whiskey actually take on the color of the of the barrel from the barrel. Keep in mind now the whiskey goes in clear, comes out amber, all the color comes from the barrel and a lot of the taste. So it's very important that we control the wood from the tree to put the whiskey in and taking it out. And then I want to show you. The barrel stage that has a soap line where you can see how far the whiskey has went inside of the wood through the winter and the summer seasons. In the, in the summer mode, the whiskey will actually get warmed up. It'll actually build up pressure in the barrel. And, and then what will happen then, the whiskey will push out into the wood and come back and forth through the season. When it goes into winter mode, it'll decompress and, the and the whiskey will come back out. So through the seasons of four years, you will you will see that the whiskey goes in and out of the wood, and that's how it caramelizes with the sugar and white oak, brings all its color out, and a lot of its taste. Now there's some things that we can do by controlling what we do with our wood. Have any of you ever tasted uh, Sinatra? This is something we do with about 5% of our barrels at the Coobridge. We'll actually cut grooves in the belly of the barrel. And when we do that, that will actually help the whiskey get a little deeper, get a little more vanilla caramels out of the wood. This is after the toast and charring. What's unique about that is any of the chips that come out of here while we're cutting this stay in the barrel. So what that does is actually enhances the maturity of the whiskey and everything from the barrel can do to make that bold taste and, uh, and bring out all the vanillas and caramels and uh, get that wood uh, finish, you know, the oak finish. So pretty neat. Any questions about the barrel? Making Jack Daniels, of course, we have uh, oh, our charcoal too. <laughs> we make our own maple. Uh, take our uh, we'll take our uh, maple and we'll make it. We'll make uh, our charcoal out of it. You know, everybody knows that to make a Tennessee whiskey, you have to come off the still. We go through ten foot of charcoal, and that is actually acts like a filter. It'll actually take a lot of things that we don't think it tastes good in the in the whiskey, like a lot of your oils and different things that comes out of the corn come out the bottom be really neutral you're going to taste that here a little bit later the difference between the top side of the charcoal and the lower side of the charcoal and it comes out really with not a lot of taste at the bottom side of the charcoal and what's great about that is uh, we take that and put that into a brand new american white oak barrel and that's what makes us a tennessee whiskey uh, along with a brand new barrel and a brand new barrel that we build and we control the wood like we said from the tree to putting the whiskey and taking it out okay so recap for day two at the san antonio, san antonio cocktail conference so that would have been friday that was yesterday um so start off with the bloody mary uh and the dueling 75 bars um so i went in and had two more uh french 75s um one with cavassier one with gin different juices again and uh, while Jin won, Jin was the winner on Thursday, Cavassier, uh, or Cognac, was um, the uh, winner yesterday. Uh, the Jin, by the way, is Sip Smith. Um, it's a good Jin. I actually tried, to, and I asked, asked her uh, if I could try some of the other ones. They had a slow Jin, which I can't remember the last time I ever had a slow Jin. Um, 
So I tried that. It was a little sweet, not really to my liking, but you know, some people like that. Um, and then there was another one she said it was like a navy, navy strength. And I'm gonna have to ask her again about that because I didn't quite get all the uh, all the info on it. Um, I was distracted by some stuff and she was talking to me. But um, but anyway, so today it's going to be the tiebreaker because there's a third juice that I'll be trying. Um, and it's, each day it's been a different juice. Like I did, it's not like the same juice for each cocktail I've tried. It's like the first day it was like a celery juice. Uh, and by the way, she did put. Uh, sparkling wine in that one uh, with the gin so like the gin one the first day was the celery juice and uh, uh, for the uh, cognac it was uh, beet juice and then yesterday it was orange juice on both and then so then today we're gonna do beet juice with the gin and celery juice with the uh, cognac and the lady with the cognac she was like the celery juice was way better with the gin so we're gonna see what today is like uh, Bloody Mary, uh, was build your own Bloody Mary. I took some pictures of that, uh, posted it on Instagram. Um, it was Rake of Vodka and, um, it was basically build your own Bloody Mary. He, he had the Bloody Mary mix. He put the vodka in there and then, a, you know, a, a small collection of stuff you can add. I'm really simple when it comes to Bloody Mary. I put a little Tabasco in there, a little lime, uh, had some bacon and, uh, some celery, but they had like, you know, olives, jicama, um, olives, jicama, what else do they have? Uh, beets. Um, I forgot what else they had. Uh, looks like there's some chives, if I remember correctly. You know, it was, it was a collection of about 10 items you can put in there. Um, and then uh, went to a Japanese whiskey, um, Japanese whiskey uh, seminar. Uh, and this was uh, an incredible seminar. This, the gentleman who did it dropped a ton of knowledge on us. And, um, you know, history of Suntory, Suntory, uh, who he works for, um, we tried uh, four whiskeys uh, and uh, one of their first products, which was a uh, uh, like a port wine. Um, so we got to try that. And then uh, and a buddy of mine who used to work with me over at Morton's, uh, he was he, super huge in the Japanese whiskey. So he, he joined um, and had a couple other friends that were in, were, uh, had joined too. And they, uh, uh, at the end, at the end of the seminar, went up and said hi to him and gave him my card because um, I think it'd be great to maybe do an interview with him for the show. Um, uh, maybe not exactly a rehash of what we did yesterday, but, you know, to kind of cover a lot of the same topics um, and not necessarily have to taste any whiskey, but, you know, we could, definitely could do it. But my friend who, like, and he's a, he geeks out on Japanese whiskey. Um, uh, he asked him if, if he could get a taste of this other whiskey that was his personal bottle um, that he didn't have enough for the whole group. And the guy was like, okay. <laughs> and, uh, so my friend tried it and he had left a little bit left over and I tried it too. It was really good. Um, it was probably my second favorite of the, of the group of whiskeys. Um, the, the top of the line whiskey, um, was the Harmony and, um, I think it was Hibiki. Yeah. Harmony. Um, and that's probably the best of the whiskeys, but it wasn't the one I liked the best. Uh, um, there was another one that was more smoky and peaty that was more to my taste. Uh, so I like that one the best. And then the Cheetah uh, was um, uh, the second best and the Harmony was the third best. And then uh, and then there's a, the Toki and the Yamazaki. And I, I've, sorry, I can't remember the one I actually liked the best. Hibuku? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. If I see the name, I remember it. Uh, then had some lunch here at the hotel. Uh, I had a fried bologna sandwich. I don't think I've ever had one, at least not in a restaurant. Um, it was a good sandwich, but I was kind of disappointed. It was like literally one slice of bologna and then a ton of lettuce. It was tasty. I would have liked at least one more or two more slices of bologna. Um, then, uh, then I went to uh, a liqueur seminar. And this was this seminar, the time slot that I had available from basically one to two o'clock or so. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of seminars I thought was going to be like, I've got to go. So I was like, liqueurs, I like liqueurs. We'll try that. I'm super happy I went to that. Um, it was kind of like, you know, the, the wine symposium where it was like the packaging one. I looked at that. I was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. And I talked to the guy. I said, you should go. Well, this one, it was just, I didn't talk to anybody. I just went. Um, so these gentlemen from Lee Spirits, uh, they're brothers actually, they, uh, talked about what they do at Lee Spirits and they try to create these, like, um, these, uh, old, um, liqueurs 
and uh, and they dropped a lot of knowledge on on what liqueur really is and what their purposes were, especially in classic cocktails pre-prohibition. That's what they specialize in. They also have a gin. We didn't try the gin because, well, we had a whole bunch of liqueurs to try. Um, so uh, one of the things about liqueurs, especially pre-prohibition, was they were kind of like a substitute for simple syrup in addition to um, uh, having it being a flavoring and sometimes coloring agent. Um, so I didn't, I never really realized that that's what liqueurs could do in a cocktail. So um, super interesting. They, they have their own version of uh, Benedictine and their own version of Fernet Branca or just Fernet. Branca is the brand of Fernet. Um, I definitely like the real Benedictine over theirs. Uh, and the Fernet, just, I'm not like a huge Fernet fan. Um, theirs was probably more suited to my palate. Um, it wasn't as bitter, uh, but also wasn't as flavorful as the as the Fernet Branca. So, um, but the other stuff we had a, a creme de violet, a creme to a creme de rose. It was really good. Um, we had a creme de cacao. Um, what else did we have? Uh, there was an herbal type of thing that was. It was trying to emulate combining yellow and green chartreuse as far as like the idea of what they are it wasn't trying to replicate the actual flavor profile and they were saying like uh, yellow chartreuse is like summer and the green chartreuse is like winter and theirs is called alpine um uh, they like to say that it, it makes it, in, it becomes spring or whatever and it, it was pretty good so we did that that was great um and then i uh, went to uh tiki talk um it was about uh exotic afternoon of cocktail history this while this while this thing was really interesting, um, I think I was expecting a little more or something different out of it. Um, the gentleman uh, uh, definitely, you know, told us the history of tiki, like tiki uh, bars and restaurants, and we had a couple drinks. Um, not that I was expecting like a, I think I was expecting a little more about the cocktails, not necessarily the 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 restaurants and bars, but. You know, I'm sure the description was more about that type of the tiki movement, not really about tiki cocktails. Um, still interesting, um, uh, but it, that was it. That was from uh, two thirty to like three to like three forty-five or whatever, and I was starting to fade too, um, because you know the night before was kind of a late night. Um, not as late as last night, but anyway. And then um, <clears throat> after that, there was a couple things I went to. Uh, there was a Dripping Springs. They make a uh, vodka, a gin, and a uh, whiskey. And I actually kind of forgot about they made a brown spirit. And it was just like a, a tasting, and they give you like two drink tickets. And there was one of the hors d'oeuvres um, at Range here. It's a Jason Dady restaurant. And, uh, um, you know, I, I just went and I, I, they made me a gin martini. The gin was, the gin was good. I had like three sips of it. Um, cause you know, again, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And I just kind of left the martini somewhere. And then, uh, I went to get the whiskey and I just told the guy, just give me the spirit, like on a couple, you know, regular ice cubes. I said, just give me just a little bit. I just need a taste of it. So I was in and out in that one. And then I went to, um, uh, go westward. Um, and it was westward ho, the, the name of the, the whiskey. Um, it was like a single malt. American whiskey, um, and it was kind of cool. They had a little bit of food there. It was at uh, uh, Last Word, and um, they, uh, uh, they 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 sh they 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 had us taste the, the 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 wort, the beer, because so if you didn't realize this, almost everything that's alcohol starts off uh, as a fermentation of some sort. Um, wine, you know, is a fermentation of grapes. But beer, of course, fermentation of grain, um, and you have a wort, uh, but liquor is the same thing. You get a beer, essentially, first, and then they distill that beer uh, into whatever it, whatever they're going to do, whatever style of, of um, liquor they're going to do. So um, it's only the second time I've ever tasted that type of stuff. I'd gone to um, uh, Garrison Brothers uh, quite a few years ago and they're, they're, they're still right here in Texas and they make a, make a really good whiskey, a couple whiskeys, expensive, but they're good. And, uh, uh, I got to taste the wart on that. So it was kind of cool. We got to taste that. And then they had a couple, uh, they had, uh, they had a whiskey that was like their, their, uh, what's it called white dog, basically like white lightning. It's like the pure, the still it, the before it's been aged, but he also, but he cut back the alcohol on it. Uh, or else, like you say, we'd blown our palate out. And then we had the actual whiskey. It was good. Uh, I was only there for a little while. Uh, I gave a little presentation, jetted after that. 
took a little nap, had dinner with some friends, um, and uh, uh, basically my friend's nephew was going to propose to his girlfriend, um, and so we had a little dinner ahead of time at the restaurant they were at, we kind of snuck out the back, literally, um, because they showed up while we were still there, and uh, we made their room look all pretty and everything, went back to the restaurant, took video and pictures of them doing the, doing the stuff, and hung out, we all hung out, went over to the wine bar I like to go to, High Street, and it was a late night. Uh, went back to their room, uh, the group of us had some more wine, and I didn't get back to my room till after 3 a.m. So that was all well and good. And then I was gonna go, I was hungry, so I was gonna order like a burger. My phones don't work in the room. Neither phone works. So I went down to the front desk, and uh, they have 24 hour uh, uh, room service here, which is awesome. So I told him what I wanted, came back upstairs, you know, waited for it. I was starting to fade. <laughs> and uh, burger shows up, I'm chomping on the burger. And what do you know? My neighbors next door get back to their room. And it's it's only like four or five people, but they're blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, hopefully they'll calm down and, you know, things will quiet down. They'll go to sleep. It wasn't happening. I finished my burger. And I was just like, uh, I was like, you know what? I could be, I could be the jerk and like, call on them or like pound on the wall i was like or i can just be like whatever dude well let's go join the party so that's what i did <laughs> um i was only, wasn't there for very long met a couple of people they're cool uh but one of the people in the room was kind of like oh, i have to be up early i'm like all right cool man you know so go back to my room that didn't happen so like i said there's a door that connects our rooms so i went to the door opened my half knocked on the door i was like hey man i'm your neighbor uh i gotta be somewhere in five hours <laughs> It's like four in the morning at this point and nine o'clock, you know, French 75 time. Oh, sorry. And they, 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 they quieted down. I finally went to sleep. Um, but uh, it's a little late night. So I had, I had effectively, I woke up about three, little three hours later. So I'm, I'm on three hours of sleep. So today um, we've got some cool stuff. I've got an interview. Um, uh, I got an interview today and that's with uh, Dick Hansen and I think it's Jep, J-O-E-P. Um, Stassen of Herman Jansen Distillery. So they make a Jennifer. So that's going to be cool. Um, I got that here in a little over an hour, about an hour. And um, and it's pretty much Tasting Sweets. There is an event called uh, for Falernum um, that I'm not, that I didn't, I didn't put in my calendar to go to. It's not till like three o'clock. I didn't put in my calendar to go to. So I thought the Tiki, the Tiki um, history was going to talk about Falernum. And because one of the drink, one of the drinks, uh, one of the classic drinks, uh, Mai Tai, has falernum in it uh, for one of the re recipes. So I thought we were going to learn about that. We didn't. So I might do that. I'm definitely going to have to take a nap somewhere. But there's some meet the maker things. And then I'm going to have some dinner. And then I got an event tonight, the Cocktails in the Enchanted Forest. Uh, last year was Cocktails Under the Sea. Um, but this time it's a forest theme, the same place we are at last year. And uh, some other uh, tastings later on tonight. So another long day of tasting stuff, and um, it's been a it's been a blast, absolute blast. Every year they get better and better and better at every, what they do here, and um, um, uh, very happy I get to come to this again this year, and um, yeah. So time for me to go drink some uh, French seventy five. So I'm gonna try maybe we'll get some video with them uh, tomorrow uh, t today. Uh, I asked them if it was cool if I did some video, and I didn't really have, I didn't really do it yesterday, so I'm gonna try to sneak that in. Not sneak, but try to squeeze that in today, and uh, then I've got the interview. So, yeah, <laughs> on to the next thing. So, welcome to the Dueling French 75 Bar. What we're doing here is aiming to bring back the 1927 recipe and approach to making a French 75 because this cocktail was actually named after an artillery weapon that was in this particular shape. And in 1915 was the first time the cocktail was made. However, it was made in a coupe and it had gin, French brandy, lemon juice, and grenadine. But then in 1927, they decided that they wanted to actually honor the weapon that helped win the war for the Allies. So they decided to put it in that particular glass and they filled it with ice. But when they did the original recipe, it actually didn't fill all the way to the top. So that's when the very first time champagne was added to the cocktail to actually fill in that extra portion. So what I'm gonna do here is add our champagne. 
and stir as we go, just so we can make it just a little bit more quick. And this is, um, because we're also here in the morning, we're doing some beautiful juices. This particular version of our seasonal French 75 is made with tangerine, pineapple, and ginger juice. A nice little sunshine wake me up version of the French 75, but still aiming to stay close to its citrus roots. Now, it's, pretty been, little it's been the same juice every day, right? Yes, sir. So I've been unfortunately calling orange juice all the time. <laughs> but that's quite all right. Because there we go. Because there's orange in it, that's what it, we want. It is so vibrantly orange, but yeah. that tangerine has such a unique fresh taste. But there's also that lemon juice to stay and honor what it is that how it began. We put in the uh, pineapple just to give it sweetness, so we don't have to add the simple syrup. And then there is your cognac version of the. Uh, French All right, final recap of the San Antonio, Co San Antonio Cocktail Conference. It's a Sunday morning. Um, definitely uh, had a really good night's sleep last night. I uh, got home at a reasonable time. Uh, neighbors didn't, I mean, I don't know what time they got home or back to the hotel, but definitely wasn't like a party or anything. Um, before I do the recap, I just want to make sure I, I remember to, um, what's I was thanking the conference for once again letting me uh, attend it as a member of the press. Um, it, it helps me out a lot, but um, uh, it's uh, doing this blog, this uh, vlog, uh, podcast, internet show, call it what you will, um, gives me a lot of perks, a lot of access to uh, events and people. And uh, being able to do this as a member of the press, not only like is 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 a financial perk, but um, being able to interview the people I interviewed um, this this weekend, um, especially because I think this is the first year that they they released the the uh, media list to uh, uh, the not the sp sponsors the the vendors um, really helped expand. Uh, what I can do with the show. Um, I, I, I concentrate on wine uh, because that's what I love and that's what I like to drink. And um, I, if, I, if I did liquor, um, I, I, don't, I don't have room to buy all those liquor bottles. And, and wine takes a lot less time to consume a bottle than, than liquor. Um, I, can't, I can't like crush a bottle of liquor in a day. Uh, I can do a bottle of wine in a day, you know? Um, so, uh, I don't get to do interviews with people on the spirit side very often. And this conference um, really has allowed me to not only just do two interviews, but potentially have a few more. So I'm really happy I'm able to do that and be able to connect with a bunch of people. Um, the second thing is, um, I think uh, I even forget sometimes that the profits from this uh, conference go to a charity. Um, not every conference has, has a charitable organization. I know that when I was uh, president of the San Antonio Sommelier Association, uh, one of our eventual goals was to have something, not be like this, maybe not a cocktail conference, or, but we wanted to have some type of event, uh, maybe like, like a one night event, not like a weekend, um, and, and set up a charity. Well, we, we, our organization really never got off the ground other than just you know a few of us meeting uh, monthly to do stuff. So. Um, but the, they, they pick a random, I don't want to say random, but they pick a charity every year, a children's charity every year to donate to. I don't know who the charity is this year. It, it doesn't really say on the website that I can tell, but past years, um, beneficiaries have included the Children's Shelter, Child Safe, uh, Clarity Child Guidance Center, uh, Heart Gift San Antonio Team Ability, and Transplants for Children. So, um... You know, that, that was one of the driving forces of this uh, conference. So, and I want to make sure I said that first because I don't want to get all caught up in doing the recap and then, and then say goodbye and be like, Whoop, whoops. So, um, so let's recap yesterday. I pull up my calendar because now I can remember everything. Um, by the way, today there's a brunch. I don't, I like brunch, but at the same time, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> so, and brunch isn't until like, I think like 11. And it's like, it's not even 8 o'clock yet. I'm, I'm dressed, ready to go. I just got to pack up the electronics and, and 
call my dad because my, my car is at the house. So, um, so let's talk about yesterday. So, um, Bloody Mary and, uh, well, not the, I mean, I did, I had a Bloody Mary and you know, I kind of expanded what I put in there, um, from the day before I added a few more ingredients that I like, I like pickles and cucumbers. So basically the same thing. Uh, but it was like the gherkin, the like small pickles. Um, the French 75 dueling bar. So it was cognac with celery juice and gin with beet juice. And the, uh, the juice that I was referring to as orange juice actually was, had no orange in it. It was like nectarine, pineapple, and I forgot what the other juice was. Um, it's in the video from earlier. I took, I took a video of the making of the lady who did the cognac. She made, she made one with the citrus in it. So I pretty sure she, it, she, she did describe what was in it. So that video is inserted somewhere. Or maybe I'll insert it after this. I'm not sure how I'm going to do those. Um, if I'm in, yeah, it will probably be after this little recap. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll insert all the videos. I took a video of her making that for me. Um, it's so. First of all, um, any of these videos where I'm walking around, and ones I've already shown you, I probably already talked about it. And the ones I'm about to show you, um, especially like at the the event last night, it's a lot of noise going on, and people are talking to the camera. I have my little. Oh, I didn't. No, I'm not. I'm not wearing sleep pants today. I'm gonna get up and go grab that piece of equipment. I got a new. I got some new toys. I'm gonna show you. And uh, you know, I got new toys. And this conference was a great way to experiment with them, because in in a in the house it doesn't really it doesn't really do me anything. So I talked about the other day when I did the re the, the final recap of the um, wine symposium that I got a, a shotgun mic and this is it right here. And I got the, I got the gimbal. Also got myself a lanyard. Um, funny thing is I brought the, I bought the wrong lanyard. It didn't have, is the, the lanyard I was supposed to buy has a, has the actual connection here, connection for this. And I had to buy the little, the little nub there. It, it costs like nothing, but I got like five of them. So anyway, so this little thing pops in there. Uh, there's a little clamp on the handle and then you plug this in. I have a, there's a special adapter that plugs into the lightning port of the iPhone and it's, it's meant for gimbals because there's a little, um, indentation here and on the, either side, you can either, you can plug in power and you can plug in audio and it will take a microphone input. Sometimes these little adapters that are like non Apple don't really work. Uh, the gimbal real quick. Um, so far the gimbal is pretty good. Um, I don't know why I'm having some issues with it, but, um, it seems like it's losing its, not its connection, but losing its calibration. Um, I know over time this little arm, um, this little arm moves and there's a little thing there and this moves in and out to help the balance. And, um, even though I tighten as much as I can, sometimes it still slides in. So, so the balance is off. But anyway, um, so I'll be walking around with it and it'll be perfectly, you know, lined up and then it'll go. Bleh. So, and it's on. So I don't know why it does that anyway, but for the most part, it does a good job. So that's the new toys. Um, so there's that. All right. So anyway, so the dual, so what I'm trying to say is like the audio from that shotgun mic, um, while it's, it is focused if there was a bunch of noise in the background behind the person or even catching noise on the side, it might be difficult to understand what they're saying. Um, I'll clean up those, 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 that audio as much as possible, but, um, without, without asking them to take an extra bit of time to put a lavalier mic on, um, you know, those types of events, I can't really do that because there's lots of other people trying to come to these tables to get drinks and cocktails and, you know, they got time for that. Or they don't. I, I have all the time in the world. Um, so anyway, uh, so like I said, the uh, uh, cognac and celery juice, um, gin and beet juice. Beet, not it was a uh, uh, it's pomegranate, watermelon, and beet juice. Um, one was garnished with celery. One was garnished with mint. And I'll be honest. I didn't really like either one. I told them that, you know, I'm going to honestly tell you if I like something or not, because 
Just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's bad. And just because I like it doesn't mean it's great. You know, it's, everyone has, you know, a, a unique set of tastes on, on everything. Um, but if you like, and they both were fairly earthy, but the, the, um, the, the, the gin one, because the, the fruits, the fruit juice was a little bit sweeter, but it wasn't like a sweet thing. Um, but the earthiness really came through on both. You, you got the botanicals on the gin, which was good because um, with the citrus concoction, it totally mass, mass, mass covered it up. Um, so, and, and if you like that style, you would have liked those, either one of those French 75s. So it ended in a tie. And I told him it's not a cop out, but you know, on one, I, the, the, to me, the gin clearly won. On the other one, the cognac clearly won for me. And then the, the third one, it was kind of like, meh. Anyway, um, so did that. Uh, and because I only had three and a half hours of sleep from my neighbors next door, um, I once I finished that, um, I had an interview with um, uh, Yoop and um, how come I can't remember his name? He was the one that even talked the most um, because his he he was a, he was supposed to be somebody else. That was going to be with the, um, it was supposed to have been um, Dick Hansen uh, or Dick, Yan probably Dick Jansen. Uh, no, it was supposed to be a gentleman named Dick, Dick Hansen and for whatever reason he couldn't sit down with me. So um, Sander, Sander, I, I don't remember Sander's last name, but I have it in the, I'll have it in the notes. But, um, and it, it'll be, that'll be with the, the other interview. So I interviewed them about, uh, uh, Univer, right? G Jennifer, uh, Geneva, however you want to pronounce it. So the most basic description of that product is it's the original gin. Gin is a juniper based um, uh, spirit and so is Jennifer. Um, the thing with, with gin is juniper doesn't have to be the, doesn't have to be a significant amount of the botanical um, it just, it, it just has to be in there. Whereas with Jennifer, um, it has to be in there enough that you, it's noticeable. So, and there's no, there's no legal percentage. It's just, it's a matter of taste. Um, but, uh, it's been around for a few hundred years and it's, it was made in the Netherlands. So it's, it's a Dutch origin. And then I guess somebody somewhere decided to make gin a little bit differently. Um, one of the things about, uh, Jennifer is that it has a malt, uh, it, it it's going to have a malted, uh, barley and malted grain as part of the recipe, whereas gin doesn't have to do that. So anyway, it was a super interesting um, uh, interview. I got to try five different Jennifer's. I basically got their their presentation from the day before in a private session, 45 minute session. It was awesome. Uh, and uh, super nice, super nice guys. And I really appreciate them doing that. As soon as I was done with that, I came up to the room took a power nap because after that at 12 o'clock we had the uh, tasting suites and um, uh, my floor was at the, I was on the third floor and my room is literally like the first room past the elevators going one direction and so I kind of woke up a little bit earlier than I had planned and it was already tons of activity because I went I went to sleep at about quarter to 12 and woke up about 12 30 ish whatever power nap Went through the tasting suites real quick. A lot, of, and I took a lot of video of that. Um, most of the time, it wasn't as loud as the night event, so you were able to hear some people talk about what they're doing. Uh, There's a guy playing guitar. It, it his sound was like as if I was listening to a radio. Like at first, I was kind of like, "Is the guy playing, or is he playing a recording?" And no, the guy was playing. So I took some video of that. For about thirty seconds. Uh, he was excellent. He was just like Burr. he was running down that guitar. Um, so, uh, you know, took video of that um, and uh, tried a few things I hadn't seen yet, but some of the stuff I'd already seen, I didn't bother trying. Um, once that was done, uh, I snuck over to, um, I didn't sneak, I walked over to the manger, not the manger, that, that was last night. Um, I went over to uh, uh, the Gunter and there was a... Uh, uh, um, a seminar on falernum, which is a key ingredient in a lot of tiki drinks. And I, I probably knew like a little bit of what 
what it was, like the, the actual what the product is. Not that they had, I don't really didn't know the history of it. Um, but he went, this gentleman went through the history of it. He, he works for basically the, I guess the only true Flarenum manufacturer out of Barbados. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, rum and lime concoction, um, liqueur, if you will, um, from Barbados. And, uh, I've got to taste that in a couple different drinks. I didn't, I, I didn't get to really try the Flarenum on its own, but that's fine. Um, I got to, I got to try one drink cause, um, I didn't get to go into the room until they had started, um, because in case there was no seats left, um, I, I only get to go in if there's room. Um, typically I, I just, I just go in because they know that they have enough seats. Um, but yesterday the person running the room was like, oh, I need to wait, which is exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, and then I went in, so I, I, I didn't sit where the drink was, um, cause I didn't want to like it cause the guy was standing right up the front row and that's where the drinks were. So I just kind of snuck into the room, but I got the second drink and it was, it was a good drink. It was cool. Um, it was called a, um, corn and oil. And apparently there's a bunch of miss, a uh, bunch of wrong recipes and information about corn and oil, how his origins and all that. So we got to try an authentic corn and oil. Um, it was pretty good. Um, so we did that. <clears throat> and then, um, th I was going to go to a thing. It was a, it was a heaven's door meet the maker thing. Um, it was, it said the rooftop, but I actually kind of saw during the tasting suites, they were kind of prepping for it. And it was a heaven's door thing in the motor lobby. And they were like banging, they were like being, they're being like a, a blacksmith type of thing. So I got to see that. So there's some video of that. So I didn't try to rush to the, to that event. Um, cause I came back and I took another power nap <laughs> and, uh, um, had dinner uh, at Maverick, so it's it another. It's a fairly new restaurant here in San Antonio, um, and it's it's a, a pretty diverse menu, and it's not expensive. I mean, there's some like kind of you know higher priced uh, entree items, but a lot there's a lot of entrees that are under twenty dollars. A lot of food items under twenty dollars, and their wine list is pretty extensive, and it's got a wide range of stuff. Um, it's definitely a som list. It's got, I mean, it's got some, you know, tip, you know, the usual suspects as far as grape varieties, but these are like maybe other examples you may not know about. And, uh, I mean, I had a good friend of mine, you may know her, Ceci, who has been on my show a few times. She's a server there. Um, so she gave me some wine suggestions. I uh, started with, uh, she, she came over just like a little bit of uh, uh, Cremant de Limoux, um, which is the original sparkling wine, if, if you listen to them. Um, they, they, they were the first place in the world to basically intentionally make sparkling wine, whereas everybody else was like, what's going on? Um, and it was a rosé. So I don't remember if I've ever had a rosé from Limoux. Um, and uh, so I had a little, little palate cleanser, if you will, and uh, had a, a, a grilled kale salad with had some tangerines and little nuts and stuff like that. And we paired that with a chocolate because right now um, there's like a big chocolatey like thing going on in San or in Texas actually. It's called T T X. I think it's T X O T X on the hashtag, but it should be T X A T X. Anyway, um, anyway, so uh, so I had some chocolate because I, I never drink that. It's a, it's a grape out of Spain, um, and then I had a, a pork schnitzel. I think I've had a schnitzel like a couple times in my life. I was like, I'm going to try it. And it wasn't, it was like 17 bucks and it was huge. I mean, it's, it's pounded out and it's really thin, but it was, you know, so it covers the plate, just a touch of sauerkraut on it. Not a whole lot. Um, and had a, uh, Malvasia or Malvasia. Um, so that was nice and refreshing with it. And then I had a little uh, dessert called the chocolate caramel tart. And, and um, Josh, the uh, sommelier there, he's an advanced sommelier. Uh, he, unfortunately, he wasn't there last night, so I didn't get to say hi to him. And I don't really know him that well. I've, I've met him a couple times. Um, he had a suggestion with, uh, for that to be with um, uh, a Bagnoles, which is a fairly port-like dessert wine out of France. Uh, and I've had not that particular Bagnoles, but I've had Bagnoles enough. But he had a bunch of Madeira. And I'm going to have to ask him. Like, he must be really into Madeira because he had like six Madeiras. So um, I went with a uh, Buell, which is a, the sweetest of what he had on the list, or the sweetest, usually the sweetest, uh, you know, the, 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 not the sweetest, but the, the, the one below 
the, the, the top sweet sweetness level. And uh, it was a little nutty. And I think what worked really well with that caramel and the chocolate, because it was, it was kind of a, it was being a, being a, a tart, I guess there was uh, a little bit of a baked like caramelization uh, of the chocolate. Um, so it, it already had somewhat of a nutty character. So I think it worked really well. Um, then as soon as I was done there, a nice little brisk walk to uh, La Vita, and they had the uh, enchanted uh, cocktails in the enchanted forest. Um, and you know this this event's a really cool event. And if you don't go to any of the other events, it's great. Like the thing about the night events is that they tend to have the same vendors as far as liquor vendors. The food vendors will vary. And and I I, did, I tried some food there too, and, and you'll see on video I I, I tried some some food, um, but since I already ate dinner, I wasn't like, and they're like little bites, but I wasn't like, like trying to go to all the food vendors, um, but uh, uh, a lot of the liquor vendors are the same ones I've seen all week, so like, I'm not rushing to go check them out. If there was something different, I definitely went over there, and a few of like you know. A few of the ones I maybe have been to, but someone said, go try that cocktail. I'm like, oh, I'll go try the cocktail. Um, so I got a lot of what's called B-roll. So, you, you know, I'm going to just, you're going to see video and edit, edit. It'll all be edited because I'm not going to just go from the very beginning to the end on those. Um, try to give you an idea what, what that, what that event was like. It's, it's themed out wonderfully. Um, and, uh, you know, they got people walking around and, 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 uh, got a band outside. Um, so really cool event. Um. Tasting Sweets had a band too, and and I'll have a link to the lady. She's I, I recognize her. She's kind of hard to miss. She's had like this really really red hair. Um, she's like like a jazz type singer thing with her band. Her name is Ruby, and that's about all I remember. But I got her card so I can put the information down uh, on the video um, or in the link. But uh, I was really there to, for the for the gin event. So my the the next episode is the first interview I did, and that was with Mattias and Hendrix, and they were premiering their Orbium gin, and they had regular Hendrix there, too. And um, they got a late start, not super late, but, you know, it was a little bit of a late start. But let me tell you, by far, and I told Maddie, Maddie, Mattias there uh, when, I was, when I was leaving, that by far it was the coolest event that I saw. It was the best event. It was just themed really cool. It was kind of Halloweenish themed, not like ghosts and goblins, but there was like, you know, like, you know, skulls and, and kind of and a bunch of moss and, and they had, it was all black lit and they had fog and they had like a DJ playing like kind of chill, cool. I don't like the way the term EDM, but it was, it was more on the hip hop side of EDM. Um, uh, house, house hip hop ish type of stuff. I, I prefer techno trance, um, but it was it was a perfect setup. They had they had uh, this guy standing on this big inflatable ball doing juggling. There was like this girl that was uh, doing all this like not contortionist stuff, but you know, she was you know kind of contorting her body with and had like like the ball that would glow and she would like you know do stuff with it. Um, there was face painting. I didn't do any face painting. Um, photo booth. They had a big bar in the middle. They had all these different cocktails and. Um, uh, I had a couple of one cocktail, and, and, and at that point, I and you may have seen my Instagram feed or my Facebook feed. I took some pictures, took some pictures of the cocktail, and I said, "My work is done. I right, time to relax and drink." Um, so that's what I did. Uh, I had this one cocktail. I forgot what it was called. It's probably in the video. Um, I remember it has Saint Germain in it and the Orbium. I had two of those, and it had like a little like uh, flower in it. Uh, it looked like it might have been like hibiscus or something like that. Um, and then I just had the Orbium straight. I didn't go crazy last night. Uh, I just kind of chilled. There was, I found a chair. I just kind of relaxed with my first drink, you know, just, you know, totally just relax. I'm like, my, my, my work is done, except for today's video. Um, and uh, then after that, I was just going to head back to my room. And some friend of mine was like, what are you doing? I said, well, I was about to go back to back to the hotel because it was about 11 something. And uh, he was like, come join us at the bar. So, um, so, so actually I actually was at the Crockett, not the Manger. Um, I was at the Manger the night before or two nights before, whatever. Um, so I hung up with a couple friends 
had a couple of beers and came back to the hotel. So um, all in all, it was a great event. Um, I really enjoyed coming to this event. Number one, well, number one, it's a cool event. Or number one, equal 1A, it's here in San Antonio, so I don't have to travel anywhere. Um, though, like, traveling to Dallas, the actual travel doesn't really cost me a lot of money. You know, the, the, the hotel is, is the main expense, so, I mean, I, it's still about as expensive for me to come to this as it would be to go to Dallas or Houston for anything, a you know, place I can drive. But, you know, it's just local, and, I, you know, I know where to go. I, I know people that work places downtown. So, I mean, there's a more of a familiarity for me, whereas uh, in Dallas, I mean, I, I like to go to certain places where I know, I know a few people up there that work, but it's a little bit different to go up there. Uh, same thing when I go to Houston. Um, and with that said, uh, I won't call it soapbox, but I'm going to end the show with this. As a sommelier, we concentrate on wine. That, that's the main focus for us. That's the expectation that we know we know a lot about wine. But we also need to know about other beverages. Uh, we need to know about spirits. We need to know about beer. Um, we need to know about all forms of wine, uh, and, and all you know, dessert wines and fortified wines and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're supposed to know something about coffee. I, that I'll, and tea, I admit I don't really concentrate on coffee and tea. I mean, I like tea. Uh, I don't drink it a lot. Uh, coffee, I just don't like. So, and... and I haven't worked anywhere that required me to know anything more than what a coffee is, an espresso, a cappuccino, and an Americano. Not the Negroni variant, right? So it's it's not like we had like, you know, this whole bunch of coffee stuff then. So I haven't really need to know it. Um, and with tea, like nobody ever ordered tea. So it, it's not as big of a thing in anywhere I worked. Um, there's even water sommeliers, which I don't quite get that. I, mean, I, I get it. There's waters from all over the world, and and you know some waters t- and water tastes differently. We get it. You know, your my, the water here in San Antonio tastes differently than the water in Houston. But that's more about the chemical process. That that's as much about the the the, the filtering and the chemical you know uh, uh, purification that they do at their water you know the water uh, company than than as much as the actual water itself. Um, Anyway, so the point is, I'm usually the only wine person here. As far as like attending as an attendee, um, there might be other wine people here that are in distribution. So they they they're attending because they're they can, not necessarily that they're attending. And they're usually only attending the events, you know, the the night events. They're not normally at the seminars, and that's what I'm trying to say is that. Not just my San Antonio brethren, because to me, you have no excuse not to do this. It's already in town. Um, it's, it's the other sommeliers. And not that I'm trying to get the sommeliers to take over the cocktail conference, you know, from the bartenders. Because it's it's meant to be for bartenders or, or it's geared towards that. And then, yes, the public, the general public and aficionados. Because some of these, some of these uh, seminars aren't don't get too technical or... Like, you know, sometimes they're like business, like, you know, budgeting and stuff like that. So the average person doesn't want to go to that. Neither do I. <clears throat> um, but um, there needs to be some more sommeliers or at least wine people other than like consumers. Because I have some good friends that they love wine. It's just, it's just really a party. And, but they, and some, some of them go to the seminars too. Um, so we need more psalms to come here. And one last thought. Out of all, of all the years of being here. Um, as, as far as um, going to events and going to seminars, yesterday was actually the first time someone had just a little too much. It was actually at a seminar. It was the, it was the Falernum one, and uh, it was it was like right at the end of the, right at the end. And um, I guess it was his first time. It's a marathon, not a sprint, and that's why I'm here at eight o'clock in the morning. Chipper is all get out. I don't drink coffee, as you know. And I'm totally fine because I pace myself. Anyway, um, thank you all for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. I'm gonna have a ton of links. I should have some. I'll have some. I should have some. I, wait a minute. If I'm gonna show you video after this, I guess I'm gonna have to record a separate outro. So hold on. Watch all the cool videos, and then I'll do the outro. Yeah.
Yeah, that's cool. So this is going to be our um, our stock gin. It's a London uh, dry style gin. Um, it is lavender forward, so it's going to have a lot of Texas botanicals that are indigenous to Texas. So it's more of a regional style gin. Um, and then we take that and barrel age that for two years in a single use white oak American um, level three charred oak barrel. Um, so that's going to drink like a gin and a bourbon at the same time. Um, it's kind of cool. It's my favorite spirit. It's the best of both worlds because I do. I can, you can use it in gin drinks or bourbon drinks and uh, or make your own up that are like totally unheard of because it is a totally different flavor palette you're going to pull a lot of the vanillins out of the oak and um, a lot of just different tannins that you don't get in a normal gin but still with all those gin botanicals okay. <clears throat> This is our regional gin. We are going to do about a series of seven of them. This is the first of seven. We released this in August. We've been playing around with it since about May, and it was released to us in February of last year um, to kind of just kind of make up cocktails. And it's gone through about three reiterations on it just for getting the honey to settle correctly and not like settle at the bottom. So it has been fun, but it is all locally sourced. So we use wild Texas flower honey in it as a back sweetener, like an old Tom style gin, and kefir limes us from the valley. Um, Dr. Manny is our source down there, so we, he does everything um, open pollination on GMO. Um, and then we get our Yopon from Bastrop, so that's about as locally sourced as you can possibly get. And we are going to do several different series of it just because the state of Texas is so big and there's so many different flavor profiles throughout the state. Um, so this one's super cool because um, Yopon is a sustainable sourced plant as well. You can't kill it if you try, it's, it's a weed. So basically, um, we were trying to go for sustainability. And, and less environmental impact than a lot of the other um, products that go into spirits. So um, anyhow, it, it's good. It's kind of like a dessert in a bottle to me, just because it's sweeter than the other um, the other ones because it has that honey in it. So and then we can make you an agroni too. We can make it any way that you would like, or I recommend it with the antique gin just because it drinks a little bit better. Liquid Alchemist, all natural syrups from uh, Los Angeles, California. They have great shelf life. Everything's vegan, gluten free, all natural. We got an old school Mai Tai cocktail right here with real McCoy rum, okay. our Orjat, which is an almond syrup, lime juice, and uh, orange liqueur. Cheers out. Okay. There you go, boss. So, Italicus. Um, Italicus is a bergamot liqueur. Bergamot is a Mediterranean citrus. It's the main flavor in Earl Grey. You also see it a lot in like lotions and soaps. So it's a flavor that's very familiar, but people don't necessarily know what it is. So ladies. Um, do you want one as well, sir? Yes, please. Great. So we, this actually is a forgotten Italian category that predates vermouth. So back in like the 1400s, this is what everyone drank. It was like the cool thing. And then in the 1800s, there's a whole political funny story that involves vermouth. It disappeared. So we're bringing it back. So we only launched in 2017, but since that time, we were the most awarded new spirit. My mom thinks I have a real job. She can Google it. Things come up. We're all very excited. I'm serving it today with um, Prosecco, with grapefruit juice, and with an IPA. It has 
It has that sweetness in the front and then that bitter in the finish. So it plays really nicely with others. So grapefruit, cool. How's it the grapefruit cheese? Grapefruit. For you? What do you what do you want? I mean what do you want? What would you like? I mean what would you drink and I'll do that one. Probably the spritz. Okay, sure. I mean, so I've been drinking the grapefruit a lot lately, to be honest. <laughs> Pop these in there. Thank you. I'm trying to not use too many glasses. I'm originally from California, use less plastic. I feel ya. You know? We're working on it. So grapefruit. So it's really nice because it's an incredibly versatile pro like product. Um, it works well with kind of anything. I like using it with savory things a lot, so it goes really well with agave, um, as well as like sherries. It goes really well in that regard. Pisco, obviously gin because you've got botanicals all yeah. around, but anything I think goes well with gin. Um, one of my favorite drinks is with uh, rye whiskey and a manzanilla sherry. Nice. Love sherry. Like I literally did a training yesterday and I was like, y'all drinking sherry? Because if you're not, you should be. <laughs> okay, and back to my brand. Um, we're available in, I want to say 36 states. I was told we are available in Texas. Yay! Um, Texas is actually going to be one of our focus markets this upcoming year, so I'll be around a lot. You can get it at Specs.
sir. They invented to the world And I just want to dance the outro but I forgot to do one more thing this and I'm gonna have to look him up real quick um, so the event last night they had the barrel maker from Jack Daniels here and I gotta see if I can find this was actually the Thursday event let's see if I can get his name real quick oh, of course it's not gonna be there uh, I think it's Ken Ken something it's in the video from a couple days ago it should be in the sign in the background anyway so this is a used barrel it's got the char and everything uh and they, they and they he personalized it to me with his signature and you you can smell it. i mean it's all it's, it's got it's got a bit of varnish on it and all that i mean it looked pretty but that's cool like it's the only piece of tchotchke that i'm like i'm keeping i oh i didn't i didn't get anything i didn't like get bags and gift bags i'm like it, it's it's all gonna end up in the trash anyway, so why why waste it? But this I'm keeping. 
um, because it's cool. Anyway, um, outro. Thank you all for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. Uh, I should have had a lot of lower thirds for stuff, but I'll have links at the website for everything uh, involved with with uh, all, all the days and the, the, the link, the, the website for, for the cocktail conference. Everything should be linked below. Um, hit the donate button, you know, over here, down there. Uh, send me a few ducats. Um, yeah, and we'll see everyone again next time.